DuVernay, how are you? Hey, good morning. Um, my name's Ebro. Um, uh, we also have Rosenberg. Hello. Hey. Um, hey we have a young lady by the name of Laura Stiles who we're waiting for right now. Okay, I haven't done any radio about this, so this is it. I'm going to do one. Oh, that it. makes us feel special. It's y'all. Okay, let's do it. Her movie is... Uh, Mage? Major? Mage. Major. It is major. Um, she's uh, blessing us with the honor of being the only radio morning program show that she's talking to. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie Selma, like, like everybody, my- like everybody in this room, well, no, Didi Digital seen it. <laughs> I saw it. And the mother, my my lady saw it. And Griff saw it. And Griff, it. producer Griff. You guys, give it up for Ava DuVernay. Woo! Woo! Hey y'all, how you doing? So Ava, um, let's get right to it. Uh, the fact that the movie you did not get nominated for director. Uh, of the year at the uh, Oscars has caused quite a stir, but I read an article um, where you said you anticipated that. Yeah, I just, I never thought it was going to happen, so I wasn't tripping as much as everybody else was. Um, and, but why didn't you think it was going to happen? Because, you know, I, from my experience, and I've been working out there, you know, in Hollywood in the industry for a lot of years before I was a filmmaker, I was a publicist for other people's films. I just know a lot of it is like everything else in life. People choose who they know. And they so it's their, it's very political. They choose their friends, but I don't even know if it's political. I think it's human nature. I mean, you know what I mean? You choose who you know. You choose what's comfortable. You choose what you're familiar with. I don't know any of the, the directors in the director's branch. Uh, so, so, you're, so because you're new and this is your first kind of like major motion picture situation, um, and, it's, and it's a large step from the documentaries and things you were doing before, yeah. You just don't have those deep relationships inside the academy where people would vote for you. I don't have them, and you know there are there are there are new filmmakers that that get in, first time filmmakers that don't know nobody that, you know that get chosen. Um, I didn't, you know, and I don't know if it's the subject matter. I don't know if they didn't like the movie. I, I don't know what it is, but it didn't happen. But I hate that word snub. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I, 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 I gotta... hate snub. I feel like snub in this case, and listen, I am the first person to get bent out of shape. Like, we complain here about the Grammys all the time. You know, I'm I'm very very vocal about Kendrick not winning the Grammy and things and being racial or all the things it could be. But in the case of this, and like I said, I I have not seen the film yet. I'm super excited to see it. I know it doesn't sound that way considering I haven't seen it yet. (laughs) But I just felt like people were taking a real positive, which is the success of this movie and the fact that it's been nominated for Best Picture, and kind of flipping it into a negative when the fact is when I look at your career path it's been an amazing story you you were doing you did something i mean you were doing something on tv one and different places just a few years ago to now have a mute movie with such incredible success and it's been nominated for best picture i don't know like you said it just doesn't seem surprising it also seems like you were the category is filled with like three ridiculous directors who are established and have been there for a long time it feels like you're going to get your opportunity and this is the first step that um, many directors would would dream of having i don't know how it got flipped so negatively Negatively, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not in the position of. I'm, I'm. I'm just grateful to be making movies. I'm not there. I deserve to make movies. I make good movies. So right. That's certainly not my position. And while there are three very established ones, there's you know one that nobody knows. <laughs> so it could have gone. Right. It could have gone either way. Didn't go my way. I hate the word snubbed because it feels like I had my nose at the glass and someone pushed me back. Right. And for me, that's just not the way I make films. I was not making films with an attempt to be in that room. I was making films because. This film, some of which you will all see, because Damn right. we to, are. We will. is about you know the the power of the people and people raising their voices for change, for resistance, um, and and for and for good. And so yeah, it's been an amazing, beautiful journey. I am mad, and uh, you know we are nominated for best picture, best song, common and legend. Is good things brewing? Everybody just um, you know just we 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 we, we go onward. And if you win Best Picture, I mean, how much does that sort of balance out not getting nominated for Best Director should you win Best Picture for your film? I mean, Best Picture is everyone, you know, and as a director, I stand there and I represent everyone. And so it's costumes, it's cinematography, it's editing, it's production design, it's music, it's the actors. So sure, the individual ones are lovely, and I do believe that David Oyelowo, who plays Dr. King so beautifully, should have been there. Because uh, I know what he gave and I know what he did, but you know there are a lot of great performances that didn't get in. You could only choose five, and they didn't choose us, and that's it. 
Ava, you have such a great story. What what I find is super interesting is a transition from becoming from being a publicist to being a filmmaker. And you've said before that you didn't originally think that you could be a filmmaker. What changed your mind? I don't know. I think it's something like if someone said, "Hey, little girl, do you want to be a potter? Do you want to do you want to do something you ain't?" You know, like I don't know how pots are made. I would never think that someone made them and that I could do it. I just see the pot and think, put a flower in it. So for me, I loved movies, but I had never seen a black woman or anybody like me making movies from where I'm from. I'm from Compton. Um, so it just wasn't in my realm of thought until I became much older. I didn't make my first film until I was in my 30s, which is late for filmmakers. So, you know, it's always, it's always possible to change, and I did in the middle. And, you know, if there's anything to be said for it, it's don't be afraid to risk and try something new. Ava DuVernay is on Ebro in the Morning. We really appreciate you taking the time. I know you have a real busy schedule. I wanted to talk about the in the movie, um, you know, the way you portray Lyndon Johnson. Um, you caught some you caught some backlash. Um, some people called you a racist. Um, do you want to talk about why you decided to portray him that way? Because people think that that's a conspiracy theory. What do people? What what is? Could you describe that he wasn't supportive of Dr. King and that he told Dr. King to basically fall back and that he had bigger issues and things to deal with, which is played out in the film. Um, also, the way the FBI kind of tried to you know, destroy Coretta and uh, Dr. King's relationship, mm -hmm. taping them, having sex, sending it to Coretta's house and things like that. Some people say that that's all conspiracy theory, but you chose to put it in the movie. You know, history is, 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 is interpreted through everyone's own lens, and that is mine. Um, and then no one can tell me that COINTELPRO didn't happen. It's a counterintelligence program. It's public record. Um, you know, in, 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 in documents and in tapes of King and LBJ, LBJ says the timing isn't right. I want to do this, but let's wait until we can get it right. That's what we have in the film. I think all of this has come up as, you know, guardians of his legacy, custodians of our memory of LBJ are mad that it's not pristine. But, I mean, LBJ had a segregationist voting record for two decades before he ever entered the Oval Office. He voted down segregation rights. He used the N-word daily and often, and it's recorded these are things we would have put in if we wanted to destroy his legacy or make people question, and we don't. We celebrate what he did, and in the end, people cheer for him. So it's been a little bit of a head-scratcher for me, all of this. Um, when you see it, y'all tell me what you think, well, because it, he comes across as one of the heroes of the civil rights movement, which he is. He is one of the heroes of the civil rights movement. So I don't think you can have it both ways. You have to allow... Um, the man to be complex and flawed, and, and that's what we show. Yeah, because it, it, that's that's honestly, it's pretty basic information. If even I know it, you know it's basic information. <laughs> that that LBJ, as important as he was, and he was incredibly important, he was not supportive of the civil rights movement because he loved black people it was okay. it, it was an issue of him just thinking this was something that didn't make sense and should change it wasn't because he was like oh i want to go have dinner with all my black friends <laughs> that it was and i think it's surprising to me that people are up in arms about that talk about the level of i mean you, you're a relatively new filmmaker and you took on essentially what is the most talked about Dr. King film that I can ever recall being made. I mean, uh, that is that takes a lot of balls. That's some chutzpah to jump right in there. Really, and just throwing in Yiddish why terms. Why not? On the She's show. in Hollywood. Just loose Yiddish. She's on in the Hollywood. Front. She hears it. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's a serious undertaking. First of all, did that make you nervous? And second of all, can you talk about the conversations you've had with the King family since the film has been released? Okay, first of all, this is a really good interview. I don't even know you guys, but I'm enjoying this conversation. Well, thank you very much. Secondly, secondly, no, it's not one of the first. It is the first major motion picture with Dr. King at the center in the 50 years since Whew. these events happened. I mean, it's nuts to think that when you really think back, if you think about a Dr. King film, you're thinking about a film on HBO or a stage play. There's not been one released in theaters, so it was time that it was. Um, and, yes, it was. it was not intimidating, but... You know, you, you definitely, as a filmmaker and as a newer filmmaker, I entered into that with a deep sense of awe, respect, reverence, to make sure that I, I was true to what I thought about it and just gave it my all with all of my team. That's all you can do is your best. But regarding the family, you know, we didn't go to them for permission, so this is not a, 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 a film that's sanctioned by the estate. That's why I think it's not sanctioned by the LBJ estate. It's not sanctioned by the King estate. So it's no one's, you know, kind of beautiful, perfect view of either man. Um, it's about Dr. King. 
Um, we gave his family the courtesy of seeing the script beforehand, just because, you know, that's disrespectful to do a movie about your daddy and not let nobody know. So we let them know that it was happening. We shared the script with them. We shot the film. We showed them afterward, and Bernice King, um, you know, uh, embraced the film so much that she just invited David Oyelowo, the lead actor, to speak at Ebenezer Baptist Church mm, on wow. Dr. King's birthday. Wow, yeah. Um, so he spoke there on, on King Day. And um, and then Martin Luther King Jr. I mean Martin Luther King the third came to our premiere in New York and partied with us. So so in a way in a way it was endorsed by the King family afterward. even though it wasn't official. Yeah, I think it was nice that it was done afterward. It allowed us to be artists with our own voice without having to hear and take notes from folks who might have different concerns about their father's legacy. And uh, but it allowed, allowed them still to celebrate the film with us, which they have, which is lovely. Um, now working with Oprah Winfrey and Brad Pitt. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know, you know, Oprah was in the film. How does that work? Did you put this screenplay together? You went and pitched it to Oprah, then went to Brad Pitt. Like, what? how did it all go? Well, first of all, let me establish, I did not have numbers to call Oprah or Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's not how that went. So that was not, no, I actually, David Oyelowo, the, the actor who plays Dr. King, had been cast in this movie when Lee Daniels was the director. Mm. And Lee Daniels left to go make The Butler, so David found himself an actor without a movie, an actor without a director. He and I had worked together on a small movie called Middle of Nowhere. He went to the producers and said, yo, look at her. She's great. She, he pitched me. He gave them my old movies. He talked about how great I was to work with. And they called me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And so that was Brad Pitt's group and some the French finier, financiers and the English... Um, producers, and then from there, later he asked Oprah if she would come on board and support us, and she did. And so, she's the one I talk to every day. So wait she's a minute. She's the producer who every single day is, you know, producing the film with me. It's been an amazing experience. Wow, that's dope. Yeah. So uh, I heard you say English and mm -hmm. French financiers. Mm -hmm. So there was foreign money that made the first <laughs> Dr. King film happen. Exactly, exactly. It was. Wait, I mean, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry to cut you off. We got to let that soak in for a second. Yeah. So there was no one in the United States of America that wanted to pony up money to make the first major motion picture for Dr. King happen. Look, there's a lot of people who said that they wanted to, but it had been 50 years and it ain't never happened. And these oh. French financiers, Pathé, were the ones who, you know, put down the first chunk and were like, let's do this. Very astute that you picked that up. It's very important because, you know what they always say, black films don't travel overseas, nobody's interested elsewhere, but not true. That's a lie, we know. Um, but certainly just looking at the things that we value in our cinema culture at, at the studio system and the things that, um, you know, that, that audiences are interested in, it, there's a disconnect. And so if this film does anything, it is, you know, taking a look at that and, and double-checking it. So where where does Ava DuVernay go now? Your next movie, the, your first major film, is the, a biopic about Dr. King. Yo, wait, wait, can I jump in, though, real quick? What? The women in this room, you know what they wanted to do? Another episode of Scandal. I, ah, mean, I mean, back to Scandal. <laughs> yeah, how did, how did that come about, Ava? You know, Shonda, Shonda and Tom Verica, some of the producers there, they just called me up straight out of the blue. They had seen Middle of Nowhere. I won Sundance for that film. That's where I am now at Sundance. I won Sundance for that film. Um, I had done this film called The Door for Prada, a little short, sleek thing with Gabrielle Union. They had just been watching me, and so Shonda's so cool. She got all the power there. She can hire whoever she wants. She can do what she wants. So they called me up. They asked me if I wanted to do one. And they gave me a juicy one. They gave me the one where the mama bites the wrist off and Fitz takes Liv to the dream house. And the, oh, It was a great episode. I had a lot of fun. So and they, they've invited me back. I just got to figure out my schedule, but I'm going to try to get back there sooner than later. So where, But where do you go next? I mean, if you come out, if your next movie is called um, Murder and Mayhem, <laughs> um, you know. Yo, you making fun of the Brooklyn joint, yes. Money and Violence? It's Yo, money they're trying and to violence. do their thing out there, I man. appreciate that, but I'm saying she can't now. There's, you, when you start out this high end, you, it's kind of a. But she's done indie. Yeah. But that was indie. before this. Right. Now, well, so wait, what's just, next? I'm sure you're already she working. She can't do it again. Guys, trust me. Guys, excuse me. I have a Hollywood agent. I'm in shut Hollywood. Shut, shut, shut I know up. this. Yo, get out of here. <laughs> Anyways, Ava, I apologize for their ignorance on the subject. <laughs> what, what, what are you working on now? What are you doing next? What's the plan? Listen, next week, I'm announcing the new project. It's good. I like it. It's, it's what you're talking about, because you're, what you're saying is there has to be progression. You know, you got to, like, what this, then what? 
And so I feel like it's, you know, progressing my storytelling. A good point is, is something I've really been interested in. I know I'm talking vaguely, but... You sure you don't want to make the announcement with us right I here, know, right, right now? Let's yeah. go. I would. Ava, you got Ava, so Ava, 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 Ava. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. I would because you guys are so fun, but I just met you, so... Yeah, no, she's... A- a <laughs> chill, fam. Chill, she gave fall you the chill back, fam. yo. <laughs> fall back. You guys, Ava DuVernay, give it up for her, please. Thank you. Um... Listen, you're making a lot of people proud. We're proud of you. And um, I, one of the reasons I asked you to come on the show and we hunted you down was because I saw a photo of you. Oh, God. Didn't know what you looked Here like. Here we go. <laughs> this is where it goes left. No, okay. You guys, wait, man. I just wanted to compliment her beauty, man. Okay. She's well, amazing. I take that, brother, and I thank you. You I see? You, you see it. that? You see that? I kept it clean. Yeah, yeah, you see how she said brother to let you know friend zone? <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> I Anytime a girl hits you with bro, <laughs> it's that did, yo, that sucked yo, all the wind out of my, yo, my whole thing. I was about to go in for the cuddle. Down. I was going to ask for the cuddle and everything, but never mind. <laughs> Ava, we promise we are all going on a field trip to see this, and we, we will be rooting for you come Oscar night. Please do. It's not what you think. It's not the same old history thing. There's something else there. That's why so many people are talking about it. People that are coming out are, are really, really loving it. Uh, just go check it out. Give it a chance. Have you heard from Spike Lee? I have. He's very supportive. Really? Yeah. I used to go online and read what he said about, um, he said some things I can't say because I'm a polite lady. But, uh, <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's he's. Gore, you know Spike and the Academy have had their odds for yeah. since Malcolm X. He was yeah. not happy. But he's brilliant, brother. He is my, my inspiration for everything. I want to be like him. And so um, in, in terms of filmmaking, he's he's the pinnacle. So. Uh, so, yeah, no, very supportive. All the black directors in town being really supportive of me, women filmmakers, women f- filmmakers of color. It's been a beautiful ride. Ava DuVernay, ladies and gentlemen, Thanks amazing so much. talk. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Y'all have fun out there at Sundance. I will. Take See care. Ya. Bye-bye. Bye.